You know when you have that feeling that someone's staring at you? I have that feeling right now. The thinker. I just wanted to send my uh, deepest prayers out to the people of Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. That was horrendous what's going on there and uh, it's a place that I always always wanted to vlog and uh, looks like a lot of it's been destroyed and hopefully it'll be rebuilt and hopefully the people there are all safe and uh, man sometimes you're just not ready for some tragedies and that's one of them just watching a historical landmark and just all around goodness town just reap the, the terrors of fire keep him in your prayers please if you uh if you're a praying person he's gotten more proactive with hounding me who was just scratching at my legs who was doing that who scratched me in the legs hi bud you want to go to the park today okie dokie all right we're hitting the park first i don't need a mutiny on my hands on my own house Got to keep my buddy happy. He didn't get to go to the park yesterday, so let's do it now. It's go time. All right, we're at the uh, the old park. The one that we come to all the time, the one that you always know we'll be at. I was, uh, I was listening to a podcast last night. If you're ever looking for a really good podcast, Alec Baldwin has a great one called Here's the Thing. And uh, he gets a lot of guests that you normally wouldn't hear on a podcast. And uh, the person I listened to last night was Molly Ringwald. And, man, I just forgot how much I love her. She was talking about basically her whole career and how she's a jazz singer. And she goes into a big chunk about Pretty in Pink. And uh, so it influenced me, of course, to put on Pretty in Pink and see if I still felt the same way about it as I did, you know, when I used to watch it obsessively. And, uh, man, she just has it, you know? She just so lovable and so likable in that movie. I mean, it's just so, so hard not to like her. So that's what we're going to do today. I looked up her house. So we're going to go to Andy Walsh's house from Pretty in Pink. And uh, we're going to see where all those memorable scenes happen inside the house. I'm pretty sure that they did film all that stuff inside the house, like her and Ducky in a room and all that, and her dad... Harry Dean Stanton sitting in the living room, but you'll remember the part where Harry Dean Stanton and Ducky are out on the front lawn. You'll remember where she gets her kiss with Blaine in the front of the house. So we're going to hop on the train, run down there at some point today, and take a look at Andy Walsh's house from Pretty in Pink. He's peed about 18 times since we've been here in 10 minutes. Ball of fire. Well... We gotta hit the post office today, at least one of our trips, because one of our pals bought my record, my CD, so... Mail will be coming your way. That is literally an accident waiting to happen. I've been under this and been, uh, crapped on before. take Ja home and hit the train. That mural's been here forever. As long as I've been here, it's been there. There you go, Neil Jones. Pay for the payphone. You know, there are two kinds of people in this world. People that like impressions and people that don't. I do not like impressions. I don't find people that do them very funny. I like Jim Carrey's, like way, way, way back in the day when he would do, uh, it's a Jimmy Stewart and things like that from On Golden Pond, but or the Henry Fonda from On Golden Pond. Other than that, I don't. I am not a fan of impressions. Wow, Pantages looks amazing right now. Check that out. All right, time to hit the train. Today, we're going to another iconic house from one of my favorite movies of all time. One of those few movies that every single actor in it is pretty much stellar. The 
pretty in pink house. Starring Molly Ringwald, Andrew McCarthy, James Spader, John Cryer, Harry Dean Stanton. I mean, that you want to talk about an all-star cast. Baby, that's it. And uh, right here out front is where we would have seen uh, Harry Dean Stanton on the front porch. We would have seen Andy, played by Molly Ringwald. And uh, Blaine, played by Andrew McCarthy having a kiss here on the front step well here on the sidewalk and uh, man it really hasn't changed other than a little bit of uh, some trees out here one of the stories that I really wanted to share about um, Pretty in Pink is kind of an oddity to me um, I was listening to a podcast with Molly Ringwald where she was on Alec Baldwin's podcast and she told quite a bit one of the things that she said was that um Basically, John Hughes wrote all the movies that she was in for her. What had happened was, um, so basically what she said happened was that um, John Hughes had signed with a new agency and they sent him over like a flip book of different actresses, young actresses. He saw her picture and he wrote 16 Candles for her. He then also wrote Breakfast Club for her and then he wrote Pretty in Pink for her. But the problem was, she almost wasn't in Pretty in Pink. He got mad at her because uh, basically he left the studio that he was working for. I believe he's with Warner Brothers. He left Warner Brothers to go to a new studio. And even though he wrote Pretty in Pink, he was not going to be directing it. And she still wanted to be in it because it was written for her. And basically how she said it is, when you were close to John, you were never close to John. And she said that though they were extremely close and he saw so much of her in himself um, or himself in her that he saw it as disloyal for her to be in this since he wasn't directing it and tried to get her kicked off the picture and actually wanted Jessica Beals, who had been in um, Flashdance to be Andy. And uh, Molly Ringwald really had to fight for it to become uh, Andy, which is crazy because she, like she said, she was... The movie was written for her. Unfortunately, she said that was just dealing with John Hughes, is that he was one of those people that if you were in his world, he felt like he owned you. And God, I've been in that situation. I've, uh, I've been involved working and helping people, and uh, they just think because you're helping them, you're not allowed to do any other projects or any other thing outside of what they're doing. And uh, those people are toxic. I don't have them in my life anymore. And um, they're usually pretty depressing people and pretty sad people. So good for her. She ended up getting to be in Pretty in Pink. And uh, I mean, I don't think the movie would have been anywhere near as iconic as, as it is with her in it. Plus, I'm a huge, and I mean huge, James Spader fan. Now, I actually worked, the very first movie I ever participated in as an, as an extra for a friend for a movie that he wrote and got financing for called Carlos Spills the Beans. And he was a friend of Harry Dean Stanton's and Harry would be in every single movie this guy did, no matter what the budget was. So I actually got to spend a little bit of time talking to Harry. Um, really at the time that I met him, I only knew him from this, so it was kind of cool to meet him like that. But then after I watched his documentary and I realized how prolific and how amazing of an actor he really is and, and was, and uh, yeah, go watch the Harry Dean Stanton documentary if you haven't seen it yet it's amazing also watch him in paris texas in pretty in pink you'll remember there's a part where uh they refer to andy as a girl from the wrong side of the tracks here's a shot from across the street of where i'm at right now and this is the intro from pretty in pink you guys can tell there's a street we're on and there's andy's house they weren't kidding her house is literally on the other side of these tracks. Can you tell that this used to be a uh, the Pasadena Bob's Big Boy? It did. The one time I tried to come here, they had just closed like two days before. You can probably tell by looking at that, that was a Bob's. Check that out. The Fair Oaks Soda Fountain. 100 years. Wow, this is so cool.
totally Christmas out. Christmas trees everywhere. I love it. I even come in here and just hang out one day. Whoa, Bozo and Panic Pete. One thing I did want to say about the Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge fires is in this particular case, I thank my lucky stars for people that are vloggers because since it's a good chance, you know, I'll never get to see those things, at least not in the original form, I can go back and watch other people's vlogs, their historical documentation of the things that were there. One of the things that really uh, was added to my bucket list after I saw it on Adam the Woo's uh, vlog was I really wanted to do that uh, zipline roller coaster thing that they had. And uh, I don't know what shape that's in. I don't really want to look into it right now. Um, but this is one of those things why, why I love vlogging, why I think it's important in people's lives. Man, it is a calm night tonight. I don't know what's up with that. It's not too cold. Nobody outside. I mean, nobody walking around. I don't get it. It's just me and this guy. Yep. I hate to promote, but man, this deep dish thing is amazing. I'm telling you. The deep dish from Papa John's for my once a week pizza trip. Well, he was just laying there all tuckered out till I grabbed the camera. Say goodnight to everybody, Ja. Ja says goodnight, guys. Vlog over.